cool. What's up guys? It's Devin here with Make Anything and this is Kokoro, my little pet tortoise. She's a cute thing, isn't she? A little twitcher. Kokoro is quite the eater these days as she's preparing for hibernation. And I just love her fat little tongue. I think it's the cutest thing. So I made a little model of her and 3D printed it. Cute little thing, ain't it? You might think it's pretty cool. But that's not even the coolest part about this. The coolest part is that I modeled this in virtual reality. That means old Kokoro over here just might be the first tortoise to see herself modeled in virtual reality and 3D printed. I know, as if 3D printing alone isn't futuristic enough, I had to go out and make it in virtual reality. And today I'm going to show you the process I went through to model something like this. Now I already made a tortoise, so I think today it's time to make the hair. Alright, so here we are in my room, and this is my HTC Vive, which is the virtual reality headset that I have. So I've got these sensors installed on both sides of my room, and with those sensors, my computer can track where the controllers and the headset are in space. And when you look through this thing, it gives you a three-dimensional view, so you're basically stepping inside of a virtual world when you wear this, and that's really what it's like. It's like you're stepping into a totally different dimension. It's pretty freaking insane. So today I'm going to step into a world where I have this blob of virtual clay in front of me that I can pull and push as I please to make a model. So let's go ahead and enter virtual reality. Alright, I'll see you guys on the other side. So this is what it looks like to model in virtual reality. I'm using an application called Codon, which as you can see is a 3D sculpting application and it's in its very early phases right now. In fact, it's a beta program, but you can already do some pretty cool stuff as long as you don't make it too complicated. As you can see, I'm able to make this ball of clay bigger and smaller as I please, which is really nice. So I can make it really small and make big changes with my sculpting tools, or I could scale it up really big and then work on tiny details. So if you can't tell already, I'm trying to make the form of my rabbit, and I'm just starting by making the very general shapes. So it's very tempting to start working on the little eyes and ears right away, but you really want the overall shape to look okay first, and then you can start playing around with the more fun stuff. So the application wasn't letting me stretch out the ears as tall as I wanted, but I figured out if I save it and then reopen it, I can stretch out the ears some more. So that's one of those little quirks that comes with using a brand new program. So as you can see, I'm pretty much just alternating between adding material and taking material away. Things can get pretty messy really quickly, but there is this auto-reduce function in the application that kind of takes care of really sharp edges and weird vertexes that are created. So next I'm going to add those little feet, and you can see the rabbit belly is really hanging down below the feet. And that's because I'm going to bring it into Mesh Mixer later and cut the bottom off so that I have a flat surface to print up from. Once I've got the general shape pretty well figured out, I can turn off the auto reduce function and that'll allow me to do more detailed things. So now things aren't going to be automatically smoothed out and I have to be very careful not to create anything too weird. But for those weird wrinkles that I create, there is this smoothing tool that allows me to selectively smooth out parts of the model. So that's another nice little feature in this program. As you can see, things are starting to come together. I'm going to go ahead and keep making small tweaks here and there until I'm happy with how things look. And of course, let's not forget that little cotton ball tail. And I'm going to stretch the nose out just a little bit more to make it look more rabbit-like. So that seems all right. I'll add a little bit of detail to those rabbit feet. So at this point we're pretty much done with the virtual reality part, so I can import this model into Mesh Mixer because Codon saves files as OBJ format. So I'm going to use the plain cut tool on Mesh Mixer to slice the bottom of my print off. And now, as you can see, I've got that nice flat surface that my bunny is sitting on. 
Finally, I'll use the align function to make sure the bottom of this rabbit lines up with the XYZ plane nice and neatly so that I can bring it into Simplify 3D and just rotate it 90 degrees so that it's lying flat on my print bed. I'll also adjust the size of my rabbit just a little bit to get the size I want since when you're making it in VR, you don't really know what size you're modeling in. So it's nice that you can adjust the size here in the slicer. Now I'll open up my slicer settings, and I've already made a profile specifically for printing out models that I made in Codon, which basically just makes sure that there's support material, and I have a 15% infill, since you don't really need a very solid part. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn off the raft here so that I have a nice smooth bottom. And as you can see, I'm printing at 0.1 millimeter layer height, which is about half what I normally use. But with small organic models like this, the smaller you can make the layer height, the better. All right, looks good. So I'm gonna open up the preview just to make sure the support material is where I need it to be. And I can also check to make sure the ears don't get too thin, uh, but they look pretty good. So I'm ready to go ahead and export this and send it to my printer. When the print is done, all I've got to do is break off that little piece of support material and I'll also use an X-Acto knife to kind of clean up the stringiness around the ears. But that's about it. Now the tortoise and hare set is complete. Pretty adorable, aren't they? As you can see, printing at 0.1 millimeter resolution works really well for these little tiny figurines and things like this. So I'm really happy that my printer can pull it off. So yeah, what more can I say? That's what it's like to model in virtual reality and 3D print. You know, I'm really sorry that I can't bring you guys into virtual reality with me because the actual experience is so awesome, so immersive and exciting. Um, I really hope you all get to try it soon. And it's really gonna explode in the next few years, so I'm sure that it will become a lot more accessible. For now, let me know if you guys enjoy watching the process of modeling in virtual reality because I'd be happy to do more episodes like this for you um, because I love doing it. And like I said, Codon, which is the application I used to make these little models, it's in its very early phases right now, just like virtual reality in general. So over the next few years, I have a feeling we're gonna be able to make some really crazy stuff in virtual reality and 3D print it out. It's gonna be such a blast and I'm really looking forward to those days. All right, well, I'm getting kind of tired of this real reality. I think I'll be heading back into my virtual world. So until next time, I'm Devin, and this is Make Anything. Don't forget to stay inspired.